with Palayon Hispanos from a small village, Abeloki Mi Ofa Tratas, born in 1946, um, of parents, Panayotis and uh, Eleni. Now, you have seven siblings. You're the youngest. I'm the last. The last one. But your family experiences tragedy. Okay, so... Without you know, father, yeah. All right, so your father passes away and you never met your father. No, no. Was my, my mother was expecting me while he died. Right. He died, boom, boom. Okay, very fast. Mm. Um, it was a, it was a, an accident on the farm. On the farm, yeah. Okay, and, and your life as a family changes dramatically because your mum is left with seven kids yeah. to look after. The, po the poverty was great. The mm. poverty. We lived in the po we were brought up in the poverty. Mm. And, you, you know, as, as children, you struggle, you know, with your farms. Correct, correct. Um, um, and, you know, how, how tough was life? We lived in poverty and all I have. Very tough, very hard. Up there, villages. We're talking about the villages, yes. not in the big cities. Mm. Very tough. Thank mm. God. My mother was very strong in the church, very strong religious. Mm -hmm. And she used to take us to church every Sunday. Wow. Every single Sunday. Every single Sunday in church. That was a, That's a big a, thing. Big thing, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. If you didn't go to church, you might as well bloody <laughs> leave home kind of thing. Yeah. Okay, so she was a, a very religious lady, but yes. a very, very strong lady. She must have been strong to survive. Mm. Yeah, she mm. had to be strong to survive. Mm. And did each one of the, the siblings that your brothers and sisters have jobs to do? Because, you know, she couldn't do everything. We were on the land. We no, were on the land. land. Yeah, we mm. lived on the land. Right. On the land. Right. And your land produced what? Was it fruit, vegetables, or...? Lemonia. Mm -hmm. Lemons. Uh, oil. We used to have around olives. Olives. Mm. Mm. Because of the oil. Um, Staphides, okay, so black caron, yep. Staphylia for for for, for eating for, and for grassy. For grapes, yep, yeah. and wine. And uh, was it expected for everyone to help out? All the oh, kids helped everybody out. Everybody chipped in. There were everyone chipped in. Okay. Everybody had to chip in. Okay. You don't sit back and do nothing. Right. So now you finish uh, you finish primary school and you go to a couple of years of high school. Correct. Uh, but Which then I wasn't uh, happy. You weren't happy. <laughs> I wasn't successful. <laughs> that's all right. That's okay. Yeah. We're not all uh, you know for education. Yeah. But um, it's your brother and left Teddy who was I going to go to Athens to, to become be an electrician. electrician. And, and I said, my mother, I'm going to. No, you're not. I'm going to. I want to be a barber. We leave so, school to become a barber. So as early as 13, 14 years old, you want to be a barber? Yes. What inspired you to become a barber? Because I hate school. I didn't like school. Okay. A friend of mine was becoming a barber at the time. And he says, if you don't like books, if you don't like teachers, <laughs> just become a barber. He says to me, just practice. And I made up my mind from... Okay. 12, 13 years old. So, and, and you go to Athens with your uh, your brother left there. Correct. And uh, you uh, rent yeah. out a small room. Correct. And, you know, you're talking about fate, okay? How blessed right. your life is. You're telling me. Right. And, you know, you walk past a, a brand new barber shop right. and you see the sign. Boy, is it there. <laughs> I want to see it Right. And you, what happened? I started away. Boom, boom, boom. You knocked on the but door. I, yeah, yeah, and I said, yeah, I was a Horiatico, they, they knew. Uh, there were two partners. Mm, okay. They knew that I was a Horiatico, because I was the whole um, looking, mm -hmm. the whole clothes, and I'm like a Horiatica. Mm -hmm. So, like, come in. Boom. So, you started your apprenticeship in this uh, shop? It wasn't such a thing as an apprentice those years. Mm -hmm. Just work in the shop, sweeping up floors. I didn't go to Taif at night. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I only went to Taif when I came here. I was only there for side 12 months, roughly. And did you love Athens as a city? I loved, from the Horio, yes, I loved Athens. I bought my own scissors. While I was opening the barber shop, I bought my own scissors, my own tools. Mm. And in the room that we rented, I used to practice with my brother. <laughs> Okay, the that's a great story. Uh, and, and, and the landlord. And the <laughs> landlord was upstairs. <laughs> and hopefully he gave you a bit of a discount with the rent. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> anyway, so it's your sisters. You've got three sisters yes, in Australia. Correct. And they sponsor you to come. They came early. They came early 60s. Yes. And they sponsored it for me, yes. Right. And you travelled in 1964 on the, on the famous ocean liner. Patris. Patris. Yeah. What do you remember from the Patris? Mate, to get away from the Oreo, plenty to eat, okay. plenty of music. Plenty of freedom. No, it was, it was fun. Uh, and you come to, to you come to uh, to Sydney. Yes. Uh, and I think you're living 
initially at Kempsey, I think. My sister still lives in Kempsey. Yeah. And, you know, your first job is at Tip Top. Correct. Because my, bro- my sister's husband was a boss in Tip Top. as a cleaning. Okay. Cleaning department. Yes. And I, I didn't know any English. I couldn't get a job as a barber. Mm-hmm. So I went with him for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. And then the word got around that the barber shop in Bankstown. I think my, a friend of mine was going to that barber shop for a haircut. And he says, try to see if they have you there on Saturday mornings, at least. Yeah, just to sip at the floors, not to do haircuts. To mm. sip at the floors. I think it was a, you volunteered. You weren't getting paid. No, don't be bloody silly. Wow. No. But I was, I was coming from Kempsey to Bankston just to be, because I wanted to be Baba and mm. watch, watch, watch what they're doing, how they're doing haircuts. Okay, so you're, you know, but I suppose you're enthusiastic and you want yeah. to get your trade. Yeah, okay. So in um, your opportunity comes at North Panania, there was a Greek barber, Jim. Jim. From yeah. Peloponnesia. Yes. And he you wanted the fourth apprentice, Baba, a fourth oh. year apprentice. And you... Right away, I went there. You went there, oh, oh. and you finished your apprenticeship with him. Correct. And that's where you, your certificate. And I'm still there. I'm still in Panania. <laughs> yeah. okay. But your dream is always to have your own barber shop. Yes. One of my customers did say about his sales. I didn't know where his sales was then. Okay, yes. He says his sales of barber shop closed down because the barber wasn't looking after the business. And I ran down. Okay. And now next to the pub. And it was next to the pub next. and next to the railway station. What a position. What a position. And back then, East Hills was the final stop on the Correct. East Hills line. Correct. That's in 1965. I'm talking. Wow. 66. And what was East Hills like then? It was very country. It must have been country. Good people, but yes, yeah. it was like country, but good people, good mm. people. And um, this is where you get your first business opportunity. Well, next to the hotel. Next remember? to the hotel. So tell me, you you must have lots of stories about, you know, uh, the hotel being next to the barbershop. You, Correct. I, yeah. I remember you telling me stories of... Um, uh, people coming in with their beers. With the beer in their hands, yes. They did. And getting a haircut. Yes, they did. They did. <laughs> Not to miss the ten, because I was on my own and I was busy enough, so they went up to the pub, they bought a beer and they brought it down with sap in it. <laughs> and, and I said, come back straight away. I said, get your beer and come here straight away. Said, and there's this funny story where at the end of the day you had to sort of pick up all the glasses around the barber shop and return to the pub. Night time, yeah. <laughs> but you learned a lot of Australian. Correct. A lot uh, of Aussie slangs. Aussie slang, yeah. like literally, you you've, you've got a, a a myriad of of uh, sayings. All stuff, yes. All stuff, Aussie you know? stuff. Aussie, Aussie stuff. You know, like you know, like you. I remember you saying to me, for example, you know, if you live with a cripple, you learn how to limp. You learn how to limp. Yes, that's Aussie. That was, was, I was ble- this is a key matter to English come on. Right, but yes. it was Aussie. Right, so funny stuff. So you learn lots and lots of English there. Yeah, um, and that, you're there for. 20 years, I yes, think. Yes, I was years. there. Until the, until the railway came along to pull the shops down. That's why I left. Yes. Uh, but in the meantime, in the meantime, in 1970, you met the, the love of your life, Despina Iwanu. Yeah, of course. Okay, you met her and you marry. Yes. And, of course, you settle as a, as a couple in, in Bass Hill. Correct. Okay, that's where you start Correct. your family. Um, and, uh, like I said, uh, you uh, stay at East Hills for 20 years and then the, they extend the railway from East Hills. Pull the shops Hills. down. You must say, they yes. pull the shops pull down. Pull the shops down, yes. go across. And all the way to MacArthur. Correct. Uh, and then you're left without a shop. Correct. No, no, no. Well, I knew I was preparing for that. Oh, they told us about it. Okay. I was preparing for that. So I had to look in Panania. I kept looking in Panania, knocking doors, knocking doors in Panania. And you found one. I found one. Found one. And you've been there, I think, you've been there ever since. Yeah. Um, what but was it? back then, back then, I think, in Panania, uh, there was the um, the Bonanza fruit shop. That was the, on the, the, the corner. On the, on the next corner. To, next to me, yeah. Which was run by an Italian family. It was family. still a good town. It was still a good town then, busy mm-hmm. town. Yep. Much, much busier than East Hills. Yes. Much, much busier than it was, it was larger. It had a lot yeah, more yeah, shops. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you told me about the Miami Milk Bar that was run by the Michaels family, Stella Correct. and George. Correct. Okay. And um, so tell me something. Uh, you know, when you were at East Hills, uh, you know, the short back and sides was the fashion. And then, you know, around the late the 60s, long, early 70s, the longer hair. Correct. Did you like cutting long hair? Well, I had to learn how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yes. So I was very careful, a little bit. Right. But at um, short back and sides has always been in fashion since, ever since then? Uh, not as much now. Even mm. now, all, a lot of, yeah, you still do short back and sides, but not as, men, as much as then. As ba- back then, the right. Yeah. Um, now, 
in uh, Panania, uh, in Panania, your shop there, Peter's, it was called Peter's. Correct. Um, on the corner. On the corner there. You had a lot of famous yeah. customers. Uh, Carl Joy. Carl Joy. Uh, and the, the politicians. Right, Ricky May. Yeah, Ricky May. Ricky Sandy, May. Uh, Sandy Scott. Sandy Scott. Right, so you had, and the politicians, local, federal, state, they all they, came to you. They, well, they, I tell you why, because they used to meet on the big corner. Uh, they used to advertise themselves to the public, so they used to meet themselves on the corner. But the T section there is the centre of Panania. Yes. It is. Yes. So you were in a very, very good position. <laughs> that are three generations. Correct. You, you, you cut the grandparents here, Correct. you cut... The parents. Uh, kid parents and their children. Kids, yes, correct. That, mean, that must be something very, very special to you. I feel privileged. I feel privileged. Mm. And they respect me, despite that I was a Greek boy, mm. not much English and a bit rough mm. from the Horyo. Mm. They respect me, they loved me, and they still come to me. Mm. They move away. A lot of people move away. Young people they got married and moved to Campbelltown, mm -hmm. Camden. And they still come to me for their guys. Wow, that, that's a... How you, blessed am I? You must feel very, very proud. Okay. Um, tell me, um, how did you and Vespina give the Greek culture to your kids? Did you send them to Greek school? Did you send them to Greek dancing? I'll tell you something. Yes. Her father was a very, 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 very churchy gentleman yes. every Sunday. Yes. Every Sunday. And you know, I was brought up as a Greek Orthodox, I'd be going to church, but much more with my father mm. and much more with her. So, yes, since the kids were born, mm. we used to take them to church. And pension. Did they go to Greek dancing? Did they go to Greek school too in the afternoons? Yeah, yeah they, yes, they did, to a and, certain degree, yes. And did you speak Greek in the house? Uh, well, this one didn't, because, <laughs> but I have all the things that are much English early years, so yeah, I want me like in car. Yeah, I love the kids went to school, mm. to the English school, so they picked up the English, of yeah. course. Um, tell me, your first trip to Greece, Greece as yes. a holiday was yes. in 1981, where you took, you well, know, that's behind the family. Yeah, yeah. Um, how did you find Greece after 17 years uh, of living? It, 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 my brother was living in Sohorio. Yes. Of course, we, we stopped with him in the Horyo. But people looked at me as though I was King Farouk, you know. <laughs> oh, Ozzy boy, Peter, Ozzy boy, Peter. I went to church, of course. Mm -hmm. We were called and tie, yeah. I, I spoke to, to the old friends. Mm -hmm. And I felt welcome. I felt welcome. Mm -hmm. I felt welcome. The Mulan of Jiggy has changed because I wasn't a, a Horyatico boy anymore. I had to speak nicely. Tip it out, tip it out, yeah. Okay, and okay, so you've been, you've been now in Panania, uh, you've, been, you've been a barber for almost all, uh, life. all your life, you yeah, know, almost years. 60 years. Yes, yes. Um, what keeps you going? What keeps me going? I still love my job. Mm -hmm. I, feel, I still feel blessed. That I'm a barber, mm -hmm. and I keep saying to my family, I'll do it again as a barber mm -hmm. if I come back to this world. <laughs> and I've met a lot of good people, a lot of friends, and to me that breaks me. Despite my age, mm -hmm. I'm still there, and I still love it. And um, like I said, you've been here since 1964, almost 60 years. If I had to ask Panayoti, Spanos, who is he? Is he Greek, Australian? What? Who are you? What would you say? I'm a Greek Australian. Okay. Because I'm naturalised as Australian. Yes. But I'm Greek. At my heart, I'm Greek. Greek Australian. Mm. That's sounds good. And what does Australia mean to you? My hometown, my home country. Yeah, I was blessed to come here. Mm. I was blessed. Otherwise, if I wouldn't have come to Australia, I'd be still in the Horyo. Mm. I'd be in the back countries. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for your time. What can I say? Thank you. Thank you.